Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Didn't think I would be on this quick, but here I am. My name is Sean. If you're new to my channel, my background is microbiology and biochemistry. I bring science to beauty and I am also a luxury YouTuber. For the sake of this video though, I would love for you all to like, subscribe and share and share this video to really bring context um, and understanding to anyone who might be panicking. Um, I've gotten questions and I'm in my, I'm being asked my thoughts and I'm going to explain this as easy as I can, which is my goal on my channel when it comes to science, because it does not benefit you or me to go into a lot of scientific jargon where you don't get it and pretty much, you know, it's not beneficial where you can use wisdom moving forward. So we're gonna go into this lawsuit for a second. The lawsuit is women who are claiming hair loss. They are dealing with severe irritation and they are wanting to sue, sue Unilever, which is the company that produces Tresemme's products. The product in question is actually right here. This is the, I think it's the Keratin Smooth Color Treatment Shampoo and Conditioner. And what they're saying is that Unilever was not transparent about DM, DM, Hydantoin being in this product. And so now they really want to go ahead and bring a lawsuit against this company because one of them I was reading, she had to get uh, medical treatment for the severity of the irritation that she experienced and her hair coming out in patches um, when using this product. So to put a lot of fear mongering to sleep early, because friends, we are already dealing with a very uh, stressed climate as it is. And the last thing we need is something else to bring on added stress. Um, so hopefully when I give you this information, you have a better understanding where you don't have to go into your boudoir or your bathroom and throw out all of your hair care products and your your Tresemme products. Okay, so let's talk about DMDM Hydantoin for a second. So when we're talking about preservatives, which DMDM Hydantoin is, it is a odorless white crystalline substance that scientists would put in wet products, especially to preserve the shelf life of hair products, personal care products, that kind of thing. DMDM Hydantoin is one that is considered a formaldehyde donor or what we call a formaldehyde releaser. And the reason why it is added in products is, is an antimicrobial agent. So it is preventing microbes and mold, that kind of thing from happening in your products. So helping to extend out that shelf life by producing slowly over time, small amounts of uh, formaldehyde. Now, yes, formaldehyde is a carcinogen and we are all exposed to formaldehyde at some point in the, our day, whether it is from your car exhaust, whether it is inhaling or passing somebody who's been smoking a cigarette or tobacco, that is releasing formaldehyde. Textiles releases formaldehyde. The clothing that you buy that is pressed, you know, formaldehyde okay so um it's not that it will kill you if you're exposed to small doses of it again it is not about the poison it really is about the dosage it, when we think about painkillers small amounts of poison that's what my <clears throat> scientist buddy would always say you know a painkiller is what it is it's a small amount of poison that you use to help alleviate your headache. So it's killing the pain from the headache. These claims that these ladies have, it's going to be one that has to really be proven because we've been using DMDM Hydantoin for years in cosmetics, personal care products. And, you know, I've seen the videos that are on YouTube right now that are even with African American women using this product and they are not experiencing any such thing. And their videos have been out from some of them from years ago using this same product and there is no claim of that. Now, when we think about DMDM Hydantoin, this is one that naturally occurs. You can find it in your vegetables, your, you know, codfish, 
um, some fruits actually have it. Again, at low doses, it is not harmful to you. In fact, where it becomes deadly mostly is through inhalation of it, right? And you end up with this mucosal irritation. 200, as low as 200 to 300 ppm parts per mil can actually cause, you know, contact dermatitis. Whereas the moment you put it on, you start feeling like a rash or whatever happening to your skin or wherever you've been exposed to this product, um, to this ingredient. But if you're um, allergic to formaldehyde, that's going to happen with everything. If you're not, then you're not susceptible to any of this happening to you, right? And again, there's other allergens in this product that could be the source of this issue, or it could be just the stress, the current climate that we're in that's causing hair loss. We don't even know the lifestyle of these women, um, you know, and not to be insensitive to what they're going through, but really and seriously, you know, people are losing their hair from stress. You lose your hair from so many different things. And, you know, DMDM hydantoin is not known to cause hair loss. It is known to cause a rash, a rash around the hair, line behind the ear, by the eyes, that kind of thing, but not to the extreme of hair loss. And, you know, reading the article, there was no biopsy done of the scalp. There was no testing done of the blood. And this is another thing that I always talk about to my subscribers. Patch testing is absolutely the key. And nobody wants to really talk about that, but I drive that home a lot. When we're going into using new products, uh, new skincare, personal care, that kind of thing, we definitely do wanna do patch testing in the middle of our arm for you know 72 hours. And I know nobody really wants to do that. Everybody wants to just go straight on to their hair with their products or straight onto their skin with this new product that has been newly released. But it does really mean for us to do our due diligence right now um, because we're the ones who are going to have to put in the hashtag GCHP, good cosmetic home practices, when we purchase product and bringing it into our home before using it, right? So if you're allergic to formaldehyde, if you have eczema, the key is to look on the labeling because most manufacturers now do put their ingredients, most of their ingredients on the label. You've got to look on the back of that label and really see if any of these ingredients on the back of this label is going to be controversial or is going to be an allergen to you. Um, so it does constitute you doing that. Did Unilever put on the Tresemme bottle DM, DM Hydantoin? Absolutely, they also put fragrance on there as well, just in case there's somebody who's allergic to fragrance. Um, so they're very transparent on their labeling. So will this go far? I don't know. I would love to see how far this is going to go. Is DMDM Hydantoin safe? It is. Again, it is a preservative that is used to really bring about um, the fighting off of, you know, microbial growth happening in your cosmetics as well as your hair care products. People who are highly susceptible to contact dermatitis, um, to really seeing you know, adverse reactions from DMDM Hydantoin, again, are those with eczema who their skin's barrier is already compromised anyway, and they tend to be allergic to a lot of things because of that, and also those who work in a salon. Can I say to you all that silicone actually is a formaldehyde uh, releaser, a dimethicone, if you subject that to 425 degree, degrees Fahrenheit of heat, you are looking at formaldehyde being released. I know that a lot of salons right now are pumping the brakes with using keratin treatments and all of that because of course they're blow drying, they're flat ironing. So the, the likelihood of having a substantial amount of formaldehyde in the, the salon as far as you know the fumes of it is highly likely. In fact, even if they're using a shampoo that has DMDM Hydantoin or other you know, preservatives in there that are formaldehyde releasers, 
they're going to end up with contact dermatitis on the hands because they're constantly in the hair and they're washing the hair and they're, you know, manipulating the hair, that kind of thing. But is this one that constitutes hair loss? No. And even if these ladies left it on for an extended period of time, I doubt that is the reason why they have lost their hair. In fact, you know, again, you have to be subjected to a high concentration of formaldehyde um, for it to really be wreak havoc on a person. If you're a hairdresser, if you're, you know, working textiles, um, that kind of thing. But other than that, I really don't see where this is going to fly. And it's only two women so far that I've read about. Uh, there has not been any conclusive test that I've, that I've read that has been done to do a biopsy of the scalp, any blood work, um, which would be done through a dermatologist that would determine that. All I know in the article, it said that one of the ladies went to a dermatologist and they just gave her, you know, a treatment for the, um, the small, you know, bumps and the irritation that she had to the scalp. But nothing was conclusive that it was from the DMDM Hydantoin or even from the Tresemme, unless they're keeping that away from public knowledge for right now until, you know, this thing ends up in the court of law. But... It's two cases and they're asking for other people to come forth. We'll see. However, I don't want uh, my subscribers to get in a tizzy about this. Yes, is there other options for preservatives in, you know, personal care, hair care, cosmetics? Absolutely. It's not every single brand that is actually using DMDM Hydantoin. But remember, I just mentioned dimethicone, silicones are actually formaldehyde releasers under the right um, conditions. We're not heating up our cosmetics, like our foundations and stuff like that. But that just gives you a little bit of an idea. And we're using this and people have been using silicone for years, which is very beneficial, right? But again, it is not about the poison. It is about the dose of the poison that actually will lend to it being very detrimental to you. It is a carcinogen. I don't, um, I, I don't run away from that. But again, it has to be a high concentration of it that you're subjected to in order for it to be that. And typically that happens through inhalation of formaldehyde as opposed to, or if you're intentionally drinking a solution of 30 ml mLs with a 37% uh, formaldehyde concentration in it, you know? But other than that, um, I don't really see where this is going to fly. I really feel like they do need to get a workup done if they haven't done, a, done that already. Um, but you guys let me know your thoughts. Leave your comments, questions down below. But I wanted to bring the science to this. This is a naturally occurring ingredient. Um, it is a preservative, which really helps to extend out the shelf life. Um, it's a, a broad spectrum biocide that releases small amounts of formaldehyde over an extended period of time in that product to prevent microbial growth. And, you know, like I said, you really would not experience hair loss from, from this ingredient. Again, I want you all to be, be better informed consumers. I wanted to bring the science to this. I wanted to answer your questions. And if you have more questions, definitely leave it down below. But this is safe at low concentrations. And if you are one that has allergies to formaldehyde, if you have eczema, then you would want to stay away from stuff like that anyway. Just like if you're someone who is allergic to gluten, you have to look at the back of the package of something to see that there's gluten in that thing or ask the questions at the restaurant so that you don't have an allergic reaction. So again, it is about us doing our due diligence because this company has done their due diligence to be transparent that this is on the label, you know, um, and they've dealt with something like this in the past. I think it was in 2014 with something to do with Suave. Yes, ask questions. It's necessary, but do we go to the extreme of lawsuits? That's yet another, you know, I, hair loss is like running amok right now because of the current climate that we're in. People are super duper stressed right now. So, 
you know, it, it could be a number of things. That's what I'm saying that could have contributed to these ladies losing their hair. But unless they have a workup done, unless they could really pinpoint that it's DM, DM, Hydantoin, I don't really see this being substantial uh, or holding up in a court of law. But the discussion continues. I'm here for you all. I love you and I'll see you in my next one. Ciao for now.